Okay, well, I'll uh, walk us through a few uh, slides here, and then we will open it up for for any other questions. We have a full hour if we need that long. Uh, happy um, to stay on and answer any questions you may have. Hopefully, I can address a good number from with this uh, short presentation here. So we are, for those of you who are in Dallas, know uh, Pegasus Park. It's a new development that is centered around healthcare and life scientists here in Dallas, um, with most notably a brewery on, on, on campus. So uh, it's a 16-story building, Pegasus Park, as well as laboratories, all sorts of place, places to innovate healthcare. But we, we have an office space here in the tower with cool views of downtown. Um, oops. To date, we have um, uh, accelerated 99 startups uh, that have, okay, hold on a second. I'm trying not to touch them. That have raised uh, over a quarter billion dollars combined. We have a strong head, uh, network of investors and mentors, um, over 300. And our startups come from um, eight different countries and over 30 states within the US. So as much as we love Dallas startups, we also have a lot of startups from elsewhere. And that's a good thing because uh, not just do we have diversity amongst uh, the startups and the, the, the different type of uh, subject they tackle, but also um, approaches, different countries, different cultures, uh, helps you along. So um, these on the top line there are my partners. Uh, I'm the only one together with Lindsay on staff here that's full time. We have uh, uh, just a, a, a very long list of mentors that are some of them listed here. Uh, many of those are also our investors. We have 150 accredited investors and family offices that invest in our um, funds. And the fund that will invest in your company is Fund 11. Um, that is um, going to also consist of 25, 30 um, investors uh, at the minimum. We also do stuff in the community and some of you might've seen us or heard our name not necessarily because of what we do with um, investors and angel investors, and but through other activities in the city, which uh, I'll touch on in a second, uh, but hackathon investment conferences, all sorts of different things. But these organizations sponsors, we are a for-profit entity, but these organizations sponsor type of activities they wanna see done in Dallas uh, and that we are lucky enough to have um, ability to do with their support. So these are our 99 startups, uh, again, from all over the country, uh, including some of the startups that have had an exit around here as well. So uh, once once you're part of our group, you'll always be part of our group. So we're not, we'll keep your logo on there, even if you have an IPO or sell your company. And this uh, eye chart here spans everything from digital health to medical devices, from diagnostics to tech-enabled services, from pharma to healthcare consumer goods. So it is a very, very diverse group uh, from uh, uh, four continents, five continents, I guess six. Anyway, all about Antarctica uh, to date. So uh, a few highlights on the, especially on the extracurricular side, things you might've seen is we, we run a network of women in science and health. Actually, we had a meetup of that group here yesterday at our office. Um, we also run a conference called Net Ventures, which will come back in early 2024. We have um, collaborated with a variety of organization. The WISH series of events also has become a whole network for women in science and health. Um, we will uh, once again uh, organize Digital Health Invest Conference together with MedCity News here in Dallas in the fall. So this event uh, uh, came down to Dallas for the first time last year. It's a very successful conference and uh, we're happy to have it back here in Dallas. Um, it's a one day conference with uh, a uh, superstar uh, cast of uh, speakers and um, attendees. A little bit on our program. So 
ideally we participate um, here in Dallas in person. Uh, needless to say, what you see here is our pandemic year and we were perfectly fine to conduct our program um, virtually. Uh, and out of that has grown, um, what you can see here, oops, what you can see here, and that is a hybrid approach, which means we, we have certain weeks that we will encourage you to participate in our program, um, especially at the beginning of September, beginning of October and second and beginning of November. So ideally you can spend about five weeks with us in person. If, if you can't or have to travel for whatever reason, you can always participate via Zoom. Now, all of you have been around the block and it still is ideal to meet people in person if at all possible. Now, because our mentors are mentors, they've agreed to take meetings with you and they will take those meetings on Zoom as well. So um, this is not, uh, uh, not a um, deterrence. However, again, if at all feasible, we want you to be here, make these connections in person and meet, meet our, um, our network. Um, during the in-person piece, we do all, all sorts of other things too. So this may be a little misleading here. There's not that many activities that involve bowling and uh, funnel cake eating and all that, but, but there are a few. And uh, we have a dinner, an annual dinner, which you can see up on the, uh, on the corner at my house. And we go to the state fair, which is the middle of our picture. And we went bowling with this group. So just to say that just like in business, uh, when you have your startup, it's really great to get to know your peers as well. So some of these activities involve our um, mentors, investors, and uh, other supporters, and some are really just for, for your group to get to know each other. Uh, every single one of these has a purpose as well, not just a, the fun aspect. But uh, just to show that this isn't uh, a, uh, this is a boutique operation. We get to know every one of our startups well. Uh, we receive many hundreds of applications for those 10 spots. Uh, also because of our alumni uh, that uh, talk to others about it. So we're very blessed in that regard. Uh, at the same time, it's, it, you know, it's a fit for someone who wants to have that type of relationship and wants to get to know this network really well. So this isn't some sort of a national corporation that will plug you into their network uh, or some, um, you know, recent college grad who will like run you through a program. This is run by my partners and me and Lindsay. Um, we're angel investors ourselves. Um, the people that invest with us are all fellow angel investors, people and friends who we know well. Uh, so we feel strongly about improving healthcare and investing in early stage startups. We love that space. We believe it can make a difference. And at the same time, we can believe we can do that in a way that makes your uh, startup successful commercially, because the only way you ultimately can deliver a better healthcare experience for people is if you're commercially successful. So you have the monies to support your mission. This uh, was unique to 2020. Um, however you want to put it, I lost my cool and I ended up, it was a fully virtual year. So I ended up traveling to the locations of our startups um, within the US to meet them at least safely and socially distanced once. Um, and so these pictures just are uh, demonstrating that um, we have our pitch practice and I'll get into that in a second here, every Wednesday afternoon, which means mentors, investors come to our office or via Zoom and help um, uh, critique and give feedback on your pitch. And so over the many weeks that you participate from September through November, you will get this feedback. Um, so we just simply said, why not? Uh, if we're doing this on Zoom anyway, uh, I could run the Zoom, Lindsay in Dallas and I, wherever I want to be. So I just joined our teams here in Denver, Indianapolis, San Francisco, New York, and Boston for five consecutive weeks. And we at least got to meet once in person. And so this is... Uh, fall of 2020, just to demonstrate that the human factor is important to us. Now, uh, our Israeli and our Spanish team that year, we, we, we couldn't meet in person. 
but we've been able to make up for that since. Um, I actually give you a higher number. It's gone up by now over $250 million raised combination. Combined valuations are well north of 500 million. And then a few pictures here of our, to us, new office, to you, probably the only office you ever have seen. It's a really cool, these are renderings. So I, Lindsay, Lindsay put something in my calendar that I need to change that to actual pictures. We have them. If you go to a website, you can see, uh, or, or go Google us, you'll see the new pictures from the new office. But this is how it looks when you come in. It's a really cool and fun office. You can see downtown Dallas from our offices really nicely. And it's airy and sunny and friendly. And um, one other way to put it is we were on the happy ship as well. For those of you who care, um, it's hard enough to do what you do. We want to do it in a constructive and uh, friendly manner. Uh, yeah, things can get tough and um, you need to be able to get the mental robustness to make it through. We will equip you with that in the program. But at the same time, let's start with a place that's full of people that are um, uh, the mentors, investors, sponsors. People are happy to be there. People that want to help you. People that are uh, excited about the prospect of making a difference and making a return. And um, and that's what our, our place is. And, um, We've just simply set up that rule that we we don't allow a holes here. So <laughs> we're not 100% successful at all times, but just know that you want to work in an environment that you know, fosters you and your and your success. And um, there's plenty of complicated things to be dealing with. So let's let's be let's have people not be part of that to the best of our abilities. Um, now a little bit on the program because I think this is my yeah, this is my last slide. This gives you kind of an idea of our pitch room. It, it really does look like that um, and downtown in, in the background. Super, super cool and fun place. Um, but uh, a little bit on the program and the, the important, uh, I'm gonna scoot out of these slides here and stop sharing. On our uh, program and on the details, undoubtedly many of you have seen those already online. Um, we, those are not uh, secrets. So we, uh, like I said earlier, we received several hundred applications. We end up over several stages, pick 10 startups that, uh, that we uh, have here join us. When we do that, we invest one of those spots, which uh, uh, the costs us at least, um, close to $100,000, uh, and uh, we invest $30,000 in cash into your uh, startup. We we acquire an 8% common equity stake in the transaction, so less than 10%, 8%. Um, there's two other ways by which you might raise monies uh, from us or through our affiliates, and there's number one, through the fund that originally invested in you, might invest another $100,000. Now that is not guaranteed. That happens after we get to know you, after our investors get to know you, and over the course of the year after you've gone through the program, um, decisions are made on where we, uh, where they want us to place the additional capital. And then up to a quarter million dollars through a convertible note between you and our investors. So my partners and I, we're also direct investors in each fund. So we are also your investors personally. But, but that's a, a quarter million dollars. So we're just connecting you to our investors so that you can go ahead and have that conversation with them on uh, additional investment opportunities in your company. Now, this is taken uh, uh, just on the money side. This is for the scenario that you uh, desire to raise funds as a result of going to the accelerator, which is probably the most common thing uh, that companies want to uh, achieve. Uh, through the program, you will discover there are many other things you probably want to button up as well. And that's why we spent uh, those three months together. Um, in the program itself, think of it as three, uh, 10 programming uh, uh, points each week. So this isn't school. This isn't where, you know, uh, you need to want to be here, obviously, you're going to be vetted along those lines. So that's going to be pretty obvious that you do. And we, we want to be working with you. 
So there's 10 programming points. We obviously know that you will not always be able to attend all 10 at all times. Uh, that said, um, it is, uh, they're all uh, recorded and on Zoom as well. And so you can attend and participate. We do encourage uh, participation by all in all events. And the reason being that you'll be surprised of what you learn. Maybe you never thought that you could be applying for a grant. Well, it turns out you can. But unless you're there, you know, how would you know? And then, uh, then you miss the opportunity. So th there's all sorts of opportunities. We want you to take advantage of them. Um, there is a dynamic around participating in, a, in an accelerator program. Your peers talk about it. Your peers know stuff. They help you. So it's, it's, it's a really good idea to take advantage of all 10 every week. First couple of weeks are, more, are the most intense uh, because we also engage in um, phase one of mentor matching. Uh, so we will randomly match you with mentors. We'll match you with mentors that you want to be matched with. We will match mentors with the startups they want to be matched with. And we will match mentors and startups based on our knowledge of both you and the mentor. Uh, and then phase five is really procuring mentors that aren't currently mentors here, meaning that because of the accelerator and it's more relatively well known, we can sometimes twist a couple of arms uh, and get somebody to give you a little bit of time. Um, the premise here is this, I mean, you should be able to have access to, much, to much, so many more things than you could on your own. I mean, there's no, there's no magic here. There isn't some, some uh, uh, golden Buddha sitting around that will hand you $100,000 every time you show up. So everything we do is hard, everything you do is hard. But it is about creating relevant, uh, relevant amount of knowledge in you and your team about the process of uh, accelerating a startup and getting you to the next level, connecting you with the right people. And um, also it's multi-pronged. So uh, as I've already mentioned, so a typical week, we will try to keep brackets on the week from Tuesday to Thursday so that if you travel, you can travel. Friday through Monday, where you have a little bit more time that you can control or you can book meetings easier Monday and Friday. Uh, th that said, those three days aren't full of meetings either with us. We, we need you to run your business and there's plenty of things you will learn from us that will be extra um, knowledge and extra homework for you. And if you will, we're not gonna give you homework per se. Um, on Wednesdays, like I mentioned, there's pitch practice, which is kind of the seminal piece of the week. On the middle of the week, mentors and investors will come most likely and most heavily attend our events on Wednesday and be accessible to you and give you feedback. We follow that with a dinner with a prominent healthcare invest, um, entrepreneur um, like um, David Cobbs, who runs Worlds and has various exits before, or uh, Dave Albert, inventor of Alive Core, or Michael Gordon, the co-founder of Teladoc, uh, or Paul Hirschman, another uh, super duper mentor who had a, a massive exit with um, Durham affiliated startup. So um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have a couple of lecture blocks that are around uh, the, the nuts and bolts of the startup and fundraising, and then also um, two blocks of, um, of bringing in professionals to speak on specific topics. Uh, Tuesdays, it's a little bit more softer skill type of stuff. Uh, well, not always actually, but like building your sales funnel or, or uh, in, which by the way is the same as building your investor sales funnel too. Like how do you work on leads? Um, or, you know, interfaces or uh, the consumer experience for device or um, fundraising topics with various of our investors accounting. And then on Thursdays, it's more around one series is I run that's around topics of the week. And the other one is run by our um, friends, various, uh, various topics that you should touch on, like 
um, accounting, securities law, patent law, um, banking, uh, FDA. So all the nuts and bolts of those things that are a little bit more boring. We are never going to tell you which service provider you should hire. But what we will tell you is that whoever shows up on Thursday is going to be a reasonable choice to start with. So consider them. And yes, that's biased. They are generally um, our sponsors. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. But a sponsor is just a company that believes that they are a good fit for Accelerator grads uh, and wants to engage with you and also uh, has um, already invested in you via us. So they are um, very open towards working with startups, which is a very important thing to consider because as simple as banking can uh, can uh, kill your startup. I mean, there are many, many ways to kill a startup. Simple mistakes can can cause a startup to, um, to fail for the wrong reasons. I'm not even talking about your technology. I'm just talking about technical files, basically. And so we, we're here to try to avoid that and expose you to good people who are, we trust that are at least uh, good choices. On the lawyering side, uh, or some of those deeper relationships, it's personal. You got to get to know these people. And there's a good number of law firms in Dallas that, that we are close with, that we refer to, um, that may be a good choice. But also, I mean, maybe you need some outsourced talent uh, that you want to hire on a part-time basis, technical talent, or maybe you need a, a, a pitch deck, or maybe you need just some, 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 some assistance with the in the look and feel of your company right, or maybe you need technical drawings for your, for your device, for preparing for patents. Anyway, so that gives you kind of an idea of a typical week, Monday, Tuesday, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's usually two, three other events during each week that will mix it up just a little bit. Uh, also various conferences that we get you in, um, pitch opportunities for you um, as well, and we make accessible to you. So we want you to, Get to know the DFW ecosystem uh, while you're here. And uh, and then overall, again, the program starts day after Labor Day, day which is a Tuesday. That's wisdom, right? <laughs> it's always a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, but I have uh, withheld the date because you can look it up. I don't know. Uh, obviously a different. But anyway, it's easy to remember. Day after Labor Day uh, here in Dallas. And... Um, we have a good amount of media as well associated with us, right? So uh, on the third day of your being with us on Thursday, uh, we generally have a, a happy hour and introduce you with a press release to our community. And, uh, you know, that's the starting gun for everything. So you are, um, I don't want to say it's never been done, but it's almost an oxymoron to be a stealth startup and being an accelerator, because one of the functions accelerator can have is to expose you to a lot of people. Well, if you don't want to be exposed to a lot of people, then you probably shouldn't go to an accelerator, right? So it doesn't mean you have to be a media a fanatic uh, and chase every story, but generally you are in a place where you want to be found. You want investors to find you, and this is one way to kind of raise your uh, um, profile of being in the accelerator. Generally, uh, investors will think highly of you for being in the accelerator because they know you had to, just like a Harvard admission, right? You, so you, you had to do I mean, spot 3% that we take. So you had to beat out a lot of others to get the spot. Uh, so it's competitive and it's your first hurdle. And we are investors. And um, so it, it, it's got value. Uh, that is um, important, and that's why media will report on it. So it's it's got uh, significance. Uh, and then the the program itself culminates in a in a pitch day where we invest uh, inviting our investors and inner circle to uh, to our offices and have you pitch. And you should have a well honed pitch with some good graphics by then, and then it's off to the races um, to um, raise funds. While I'm talking here, I'm getting texts from our German startup that's about to, they want me to sign off on some documents. So they're raising a million and a half. Um, but in any case, it, it, it it's just to illustrate <laughs> that it's, it's never a dull moment here. And uh, that's what you should expect in an accelerator, right? Um, what 
we hope to accomplish is something that would take you a couple of years to accomplish. Um, and we endeavor to do that in three months, which is should save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, but that's kind of the goal, right? So that the term is descriptive in accelerator. It should give you access. And, and all these mentors, you know, you could dial them up yourself, go find them yourself, uh, hit them up yourself for a meeting. A few of them will take the meeting. Most won't for a random startup. Uh, but here they kind of have agreed to take the meeting. So this is kind of a, a give of theirs uh, because you've made you made it through this um, through this process. So and also because they have a relationship with us and they have pledged to take meetings with the ten startups every year. I can't force them to, but I'm just saying that's kind of the, those are the type of things you should think about. Again, nothing we do is magic. There's no no uh, as much as I wish no no money uh, glued to the bottom of the desks that re regenerates every day and you show up at your desk and you just <laughs> pull out a dollar bills out. Not happening here. But um, but metaphorically speaking, uh, it is, I think, incredibly important and worth its weight in gold to, this is self-serving, obviously, to be in an accelerator where you can have this kind of focused approach to accelerating your startup. Um, because very often it's also difficult to, to, to just focus, right? You get other things to do and things get track, distracted. And so you're really uh, signing up to be uh, in a group of people that's very driven. By the way, you will love the people you meet. I mean, you've met a few people here on this call, but you should expect them to be exceptional. I mean, they're going to be special in some way, form or fashion. There's absolutely no, no doubt about it. And that doesn't mean that it has to be a degree, by the way. I'm not talking about, ooh, they're also fancy and have all these degrees. Some do. We had a cardiac surgeon from Paris join last year. Um, well, last year was... Uh, uh, surgeon here so we had one from india as well but it, it doesn't matter it, 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 yes there's some of them are very impressive people um but everyone's got something special others are just superb at giving pitches others are going to have uh a really great communication skills another person was going to be just phenomenal at at, at um uh, making uh friends and getting people riled up and, and they will help you too before you know it, your, your buddy next door on the bench, uh, on the desk behind you has pitched you to someone and says, hey, you got to meet so-and-so because you just said cardiovascular and this person is AHA, for instance. So we have a relationship with American Heart Association. Uh, so then, the, or somebody just showed up and they say, oh, somebody just showed up and they say they're a cardiac surgeon and your device is for them. I don't want to be all cardiac, but anyway, I'm just saying um, that's, that's the type of stuff that starts happening. Um, so I will, uh, we have 20 minutes left, and so we'll take questions. If you do me a favor, if you uh, want to ask a question, turn your video on so I can see whether you're uh, waving at me um, so we don't have a, so or use the little icon to raise your hand uh, so I can call you and give you a chance to ask any questions. Let's see if anybody uh, has a question, just raise your hand or... Uh, wave at me or send me the little question icon. You, Kathy? Yeah, I can't find the icon. <laughs> but I do have a question, two questions. Um, so what is the app? So what is the interview process? I, I haven't gone into the application, but what happens after you apply? And then secondly is how often do you do cohorts? Is it two times a year or Once one time a year? A year? Okay, that's so every fall you're doing them in the every fall we're doing them. Okay. Um, so that's that. And so we're on our 11th court. We'll celebrate our 10th birthday here in June and have a, a happy hour here as well. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. On uh, your other question was on the interview process. So uh, actually, startups are being evaluated already as we speak. Uh, <clears throat> you can find the link on our webpage to apply to us. There are two different platforms we use this year, Gust and F-Success. I think one of them shuts down in the next couple of days and the other one goes for another 10 days or so. Um, but like I said, um, we, we're get, we already have several hundred applications. Um, so by the time the deadline rolls around, it'll be definitely north of 300, maybe even north of 400. 
um, it doesn't matter so much how many it is. It needs to be the right time and the right fit for you. So what will happen on our end, your application gets evaluated. The best insider tip I know is to um, don't be shy around the video. There's an opportunity to upload a video, do it. I mean, even it's just your iPhone, I don't, I don't care. It, I mean, these iPhones are better than anything you can probably have otherwise. But anyway, it's perfectly good. Just hold it still and think about what you want to say for a minute. One shot, one is, a, is your team. We want to know a little bit about you and your team. And the other video is around your technology and the opportunity. Just by seeing that video it tells us so much about you. Uh, we learn so much. And our reviewers, um, they always look at the video. So you, you leave out the video. Now they're just reduced to reading your application. And I mean, you can imagine it's like one after another after another. So there's no way to stand out in the application as far as font go or size or anything. So now it's all in the writing. And I mean, if you tell me about something really exciting that you're doing, uh, it, it'll capture me. And we learn about you and your ability to express yourself, who you are. It's a, you learn so much from a short video. And if they're one minute, so I would, I would encourage you to write down a few points you want to make and try it out. Uh, I think you can get it done in a couple hours. And um, don't overthink the quality. I mean, we've had people apply with like production level videos. If it doesn't matter. I, I mean, actually at some level you start wondering like how in the world do you have hours to like make a video with animations all just for this? Kind of like maybe you're a guru in that. So maybe that's just your strength, but just just know that like, hey, it's, it doesn't have to be too casual. You certainly can set it up. You can script it if you want. I feel like best is to just tell us just get on there, have your talking points, set a timer for a minute. If you don't like it, do it again. And uh, and you're done. So so that's the that's the evaluation. So do the videos. Um and and, and then uh, we we will interview about 50 startups. So Zoom or in person. Probably Zoom most of the times. And from that, we invite 25 to come to Dallas to pitch in the summer. And then our investors and mentors come to that event and help us pick the 10 that should participate in the program. And then we onboard you over the summer, do due diligence, um, and sign a set of term sheets, which is kind of the, the basic parameters of what I already explained. You, we invest X amount of money, we get about this. Well, we trust that process. I mean, if you wanna be an the accelerator, then we'll, we'll figure out the fine, the fine tuning of all that. But that's, we've done it 10 times like that and it works. Uh, works just fine. There's stuff like you, you don't have to worry about too much. You, generally we invest in C Corps. So ideally Delaware C Corps, but we also Texas. That can be easily done in the summer if you come get into the program. Um, to, to switch over. But we will do things that we believe an investor would ask of you so that when you are here and exit the accelerator, you are investable. If you're an LLC, I mean, you can raise money as an LLC, but just not through our channels. Uh, most of our investors want zero risk. The only risk they have is they gave you 25K and now it's gone. They're okay with that, but they're not okay with being on the hook for other stuff, which in an LLC scenario, you, you might be. Uh, so they, um, me included, I, I don't have time for now being pulled into some lawsuit of some kind. So anyway, um, let's see if there are other questions that I can answer for anyone on this call. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, um, what's what's the use of funds for the uh, 30K you invest in cash? Can that be used for travel? Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, here here's the thing, Greg, we, after vetting the startup, we decided you're a pretty cool startup and we want to be part of that. And um, 
a part of that decision is like, yeah, you can make decisions on your own. Uh, so yeah, there's no there's no limits on what you can use the money for. Um, for uh, we're not gonna anything you need. Uh, as a matter of fact, we we usually um, want you to engage with uh, some law firm, some accounting firm, and we know you're going to have to pay them with our money to start with anyway. Uh, and that's totally fine. We see these relationships as value add, right? So it's like an outsourced team member. That is your attorney. That's your accountant. That's your FDA regulatory consultant. Those type of people. So we um, we think it is as a as a as a positive. And we absolutely travel and uh, lodging here in Dallas. If you're from out of town, it's all fine. And do you have to be a U.S. incorporated company? Generally, yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the simple answer to that is that. But again, that can be done fairly quickly, is that uh, our investors are unlikely to want to invest in some foreign entity. And that's just the way U.S. investors are. Uh, in Europe, where I'm from, it's much more typical to invest in a French or Spanish or Italian company or German company. Um, the German company I was mentioning a minute ago, that's a closing their million dollar round. Uh, they're, in, they're incorporated in Delaware. And their investor is from Holland. So um, this is not, um, US is kind of an equalizer in that, opens up the maximum amount of people who invest. Um, I don't know about Australia, um, but I do know, for instance, Austria, where I am from, it's painful to invest. I've done it and it's painful. It's a painful process and it, it, it remains painful throughout the time that you own this shares in this company. So, but from our, from our side, it's simply pragmatic that um, if you're not, and then I introduce you to a bunch of my investors and then they all say, well, <clears throat> you know, we don't invest in Australian companies or non-US non and that's kind of a, a bummer, right? So there's there's always solutions for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Let's see if we have any other questions. Hubert, uh, this is Rob. Um, yeah. I couldn't find the raise hand icon. Sorry. No worries. Uh, so is there sort of a phenomenon where I, I guess I, you can kind of equate it to uh, American Idol, where? <laughs> The singer is a really good singer. They may not win the, the competition, but um, similar to, to here, you may not um, earn a, a spot at, as a, an elite accelerator uh, because for whatever reason, maybe you know you have a great concept, but you're not quite ready for prime time. Is there a way to tap into some of the resources and, and networks um, outside of uh, the accelerator program? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the best shortcut is to hang out here. I mean, we have an office and we rent desks and offices. So um, a startup that is here, even if you're not in our accelerator, um, you know, you'll have access to other people um, in the office and visitors. And, you know, it's about collisions. So stuff will happen. Uh, even if you're not part of the accelerator, you now you cannot just crash the the lectures <laughs> oh, right. no, So that that doesn't work. Uh, um, uh, but for the most part, you'll have access to a lot of things. Um, and obviously, from the address as well, it's a good address in Dallas to have. Most people know that this park, uh, three thousand Pegasus Park, is associated with health innovation. Uh, if you are within our offices and run the desk and office here, then that too could have uh, positive effects. I mean, I rely on the honesty of all of people that are here to make the differentiation between themselves and a program company. That said, I don't think any harm is done if people think that you're in the office and clearly you seek this type of competitive environment. If they want to check you out, they can always look on the website and they won't find your, lo your logo as a program company. Uh, but so yes, that's um, and we have a few companies here that are um, non 
graduates of our program and take advantage of that. Um, so that's that's probably the best. And then be on our web, on our uh, mailing list and you know attend our events and um, kind of those type of interactions are also helpful to most startups. Got it. Okay. Thank you. What's the accommodation situation like in um, in Dallas? Is there a rental crisis like a lot of places? Good question. I don't think so. I mean, I mean, there's um, there. I think. I mean, I think you can find rental apartments uh, or houses. I mean, it's not super cheap, but it's cheaper than the coasts by quite a bit, and. Um, yeah, so I, I think it shouldn't be a big problem. All of our startups have successfully found something in the vicinity. Okay, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also looking for the raise your hand then, but okay, all it's, right. By the way, yeah, it's at the bottom, it's under reactions. So you click on reaction, you see raise your hand. So it's, uh, it's a little, it's like the emoji. If you click on the emoji, then you see, and then you just go, go over there and click on the yeah. one you want. Okay, yeah, so okay, all right. So my question is, um, for the startups that are accepted into the program, what is the earliest stage that they can be in that will be considered by you? That is seed stage, you know, idea stage, MVP. Like what is the earliest that I mean, uh, uh, that can get any consideration. Yeah, I mean, so generally, I mean, first of all, you gotta have a st structure you can invest in. So, uh, I mean, so uh, you know, Greg in, uh, has a company. In, 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 so when, when we write a check and we write money, we're not gonna send it to a person. We're gonna send it to a corporation. So you gotta have a corporation that has a bank account, the basics, right? So to receive the money. Uh, so that's on the technical side uh, important. And with that usually comes the various sets of documents that you have to have in place. But we, we know that if they may be half-baked to date, you only took money from friends and family. So maybe it's pretty loosey-goosey. You don't have a few things in place like an employment agreement between yourself and your own company. There's just some things you might not have needed. Uh, so we'll certainly encourage you to have some of those to make you investable by outsiders. Uh, so, so there's some technical hurdles like that, uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's also something can be fixed, um, you know, once you're in the program. I mean, you can start a, a company here in the U.S. fairly simply uh, within a few weeks, a um, couple of weeks. I mean, you can incorporate and get that done with the help of a lawyer, one of ours. The ones we know that should charge you very little, a few couple thousand dollars maybe if that much, there's some filing fees. Um, but um, on the technology side, generally a digital health startup will already be selling something. So a digital health startup will have created a product and they're selling something or they have beta customers that are ready to convert. So they are early, but then in a way also um, they've gotten some things done already. A medical device, would likely have um, um, a functioning prototype, some patents or uh, rights to a license agreement from a university or rights to a patent and probably some idea about the regulatory pathway, but not more. If it's pharma, probably all bets are off. I mean, it's like super early, you, you have rights to something, but you don't know if it works yet, maybe animal data, some ancillary, some, some inc incidental findings, the legibility that it was. Uh, and our, our pharma AI company was pretty early. That's the one that had the IPO on NASDAQ called Lantern Pharma. They were pretty early, but they ended up all, um, you know, going on, on public during the pandemic. And so, um, and healthcare consumer goods, generally you're also in the market already. But you're early. You might not know how to sell this stuff. You might not know what the best approach is. You might need extra money, and now you got to get ready to raise it. You have a product. You've sold a few, but now you need to make ten thousand. Well, where do you get the money from? So, 
you're out there looking for for capital to get to the next level is very often the consensus right so with a medical device there's lots of costs of course with visual health marketing so it, it's different subjects but um hopefully that answers it uh let's see nitin go ahead uh yeah so uh I Almost a follow on to that. So, so if you're working on software as a medical device, which, which is, uh, I suppose, not quite a new category, but still a newer uh, category, uh, how far along in, in that process would uh, do you typically want to see? Well, uh, funny enough, you said you're in the stroke yeah. avoidance space. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, uh, we, companies will generally have some sort of software that already is, you know, you can run it against imaging data. I assume that's what you're doing. And um, yeah. you have figured out some algorithms and uh, hopefully a few insiders have tried it out uh, to say okay. yeah, this actually works. Um, is, is your uh, software, may I ask what, what scenario it works in the stroke prevention? So I'm, I'm actually trying to go for, for more, more resolution for ischemic stroke. So okay. right now there's LBO, uh, right? The large, large vein occlusion type things, um, but trying, trying to do smaller, uh, higher resolution, uh, partly because the, the models that are being trained or pre-trained are uh, becoming more and more powerful and, and making use of that. Uh, would be very helpful, but in particular, I want to, I want to create a cadre of target users like like myself, a stroke survivor, and I get checked somewhat regularly. Uh, but a lot of people who are interested in, I wouldn't necessarily say guinea pigs, but they 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 want to to help this process, right? So that's that's kind of the secret part of it is that we're yeah we're a community. No, that's that, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We had a startup uh, last year, uh, actually uh, out of France, and it's a uh, stroke risk assessment tool. Um, when um, you place a, a heart valve, you have an increased uh, chance of uh, shooting a clot. And um, But the filters you put in place have their own set of risks. So just putting the prevention tools in place in all cases is maybe not a good way to go. You probably want to figure out when to put those on the uh, filters uh, and when not to put them on. So there's currently no guidance. It's actually um, all over the place. And so this is a cardiac surgeon um, who has developed this and he also loves AI programming. So he's developed this. So there's a very specific use and he's in about a dozen hospitals on a trial basis, but those are all his friends that went to med school with. And um, so we're just trying to convert those to, to sales now. Cool. Uh, Greg, go ahead. And we're at time. So anyone that needs to jump, no, no, uh, don't, don't uh, feel free to jump. Uh, no, no, uh, no hard feelings here because we'll, we'll jump here ourselves in a couple of minutes. Good, Greg. You're muted. Yep. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry about that. The gap that we're trying to fill is that we we're really looking for a US based um, CEO um, partner. Uh, is that a, a, an inhibiting gap for us to get into the accelerator? Or is it something that we could use the accelerator for? Um. It's not an easy one, yeah. Um, it depends, it depends. Generally, it's really, really important who's on the team and who's gonna do the work. And then we're gonna see in the, in the accelerator program, we wanna introduce you to many of our resources. And if that person isn't identified or will be replaced soon, it's, that's you know, in a suboptimal situation because we want you to be successful in placing, making these connections because we believe it'll help you in the long run. And if it's someone that hadn't been identified or will be replaced and now you have to start from scratch with a new CEO, it may be harder. So it, it's something to think about if you want to come to the US of who 
who might come and then find a co-founder if you want um, to call it that uh, here. So that's, that's my short answer, but it's it's the people, right? This is very important. Yeah, and um, if, if that person, I mean, it's kind of a pity if that person then leaves or and somebody else gets com comes in. Uh, it's difficult. It's a very personal thing to find a such a person, right? I mean, obviously, you'll meet a, a good number of people in the program, and some might. Mentors have taken all sorts of roles in the program. Uh, we certainly have uh, some great cardiac uh, mentors in the program that are in full-time jobs, though. So who knows? But anyway, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a difficult more difficult because. People are gonna, you know, look in the eye and give you the money, and then if that person is a different person, it's gonna execute. So I'm happy to stay on and ask answer additional questions, but we are at time, so um, also want to be respectful of your time. Um, is there any more questions that I can answer real quick here? And if not, then we can uh, close this out and um, hopefully see your applications come through. Uh, look, mention it in the comment section of the application that you were on this call and that you met uh, our team. Sort of helps us as well. We, we see a lot Thanks. of service. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.